Good evening, folks. This is uh, Dr. Paul. Thank you so much for tuning to our channel today. And uh, medical blog, I'm not coming that often these days, but I will try to come more often because of all these uh, pandemic stuff. We have uh, so many issues going on and uh, I have been uh, uh, taking care of patients. Like a lot of patients are so worried now. They call me and say, doctor, do we need to come? Are we going to infect it? So it's, it's hard. So that's the reason that I am spending more time in the hospital and uh, not able to come to this block. So today I want to talk about Staphylococcus. They are spherical gram-positive cocci arranged in grape-like clusters. They produce catalase and uh, streptococci do not. There are three important species, Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, and Staph saprophyticus. Staphylococcus aureus is coagulase positive, and uh, epidermidis and saprophyticus are coagulase negative staphylococci. The nose is the main site of colonization for this bacteria. And this bacteria causes abscesses, endocarditis, septic carditis, osteomyelitis, food poisoning, skin infections, soft tissue infections, pneumonia, septicemia, wound infections, conjunctivitis, scalded skin syndrome, toxic shock syndrome. You see, I saw all these people with this condition. It's so common. The most common cause of bacterial conjunctivitis. So treatment depends on how, what you are saying. Like if you see uh, an infection, use an antibody like clindamycin, trimethoprim, sulfamethoxyl, doxycycline, minocycline, decloglycillin, cephalexin. And if you see folliculitis, basically folliculitis is an inflammatory condition of the hair follicle. And uh, you will see papules and uh, pustules with central heads. It can be superficial or deep. It can be infectious or non-infectious. You see, in all uh, folliculitis, you need to go, go for the cause. It can be bacterial, viral, fungal. You don't know. But the most common bacteria is Staphylococcus aureus. So when you see folliculitis, don't think that it is bacteria. It could be even viral. Then toxic shock syndrome is another toxin-mediated clinical illness characterized by rapid onset of fever. You will see macular rash, hypotension, multi-organ system involvement. And classically, it is associated with tampon use. And it colonizes the nasopharynx, rectum, vagina wounds, and abscesses. Symptoms are due to the production and release of exotoxins by staph aureus. So the toxin is playing in toxic shock syndrome, and you will see uh, a reddened tongue, a strawberry tongue, subject subconjunctival hemorrhages, fever, vomiting, watery diarrhea, diffuse macular rash, followed by disquamation, particularly on the palms and soles. So the rash should point you to staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome. And blood cultures may be deceptive, they may be negative. So you need to go for wound cultures. Wound cultures measure staph aureus. Treatment, antibiotics, always treat the shock. And you need to remove the toxin, like if the, if the tampon, remove the tampon. If there is a wound that is uh, festering, remove that using incision and uh, drainage. So some people ask me, now toxic sh shock syndrome caused by staph aureus and strap. How to differentiate between the two? In staph, you will see a rash. In strap, you do not see a rash. So that is the difference you need to remember. In staphylococcal toxin shock syndrome, you will see that uh, diffuse maculopapular rash on their palms and soles. But in streptococcal toxic shock syndrome, you do not see that rash. So that is how you differentiate between these two toxic shock uh, syndromes. And uh, 
that's why I wanted to talk today about uh, Staphylococcus because this week I saw uh, a nine-year-old girl and two of her uh, fingers, like both thumbs, have this uh, cellulitis. And in the left thumb, there is a huge cellulitis. It's almost like becoming an abscess. So why is this? I mean, I wondered why she got these two thumbs. And she is basically using the thumbs like this. She is scratching this thumb with this thumb. So that scratching, it contaminated even the right thumb. So you see, you can spread these infections very quickly in that manner. So I gave her an antibiotic and I told her to come back. So that is how you treat these infections. Staphylococcus you can uh, see in many different formats. As I said, it can cause conjunctivitis, it can cause cellulitis, abscess, it can cause folliculitis, it can cause toxic shock syndrome. You see, it is coming to us in many different forms. So you need to see it and you need to promptly treat it because if, if you do not treat certain infections like especially tampon use for example it can lead to toxic shock syndrome which could be fatal so classically tampon use but it can be anything any foreign body can in your body can predispose you to staphylococcal infections and unfortunately we have so much iv drug use and needle use that is also putting people at high risk for staph infections. So do not use contaminated needles. Always use sterile needles when you uh, do this. I'm not saying that I'm talking to people in healthcare. So always make sure you're using sterile uh, injections when you do, because otherwise, you're putting people at high risk for staph infections. So those are the things I wanted to share with you about staphylococcus infections. And uh, I promise you, I will come more often to this blog. So uh, subscribe to this medical blog and we are going to talk more about medically relevant uh, subjects from now onwards. Thank you, have a good day.